Now markets, markets in 2016, it's been a very volatile year. Every asset class has been affected. In terms of UK equities, the FTSE 100 has gone from a low of 5,536 to a high of 7,097. Very, very volatile. Commercial property funds have been suspended for four to five months this year and their market values have been reduced by up to 12%. Government bond yields earlier in the year on a 10-year Treasury yield were 2%. Following Brexit, they fell to 0.6 and we were on the road to negative rates. Post-Brexit, they've actually gone back up. They're now 1.45%. Yields are increasing. So bond values are falling. And as for index linked bonds, corporate bonds and government bonds, we've seen a 27% rise in their prices in a six month period. But what we've also seen is a 10% fall in November. So there's been an awful lot of volatility. Now it's basically been due, as you all know, to the momentous political events and a slowing global economy through 2016. But there's more to come in 2017. There's a lot of EU political uncertainty. Italy's got a referendum this uh, weekend. If the government lose the referendum, they'll be going to uh, a full election. We've got uh, elections in France, Austria and Germany. And we've got popular politics on the rise. Now Italy's up first. <coughs> It's really interesting. What you heard today from Cormac is the extent of the UK government debt, but it's all over Europe and debt is the problem. Italy has 132% national debt to the size of their economy or GDP. Its economy has declined 6% since they joined monetary union. Unemployment is, is over 10% and three major banks are in desperate trouble. Now, all the studies show, in fact, two ma a major study in the last uh, six, seven years by two eminent uh, professors, uh, Kenneth Rogoff and Carmen Reinhardt, conclusively proved that when debt to GDP gets in the region of 90%, it basically causes problems with the economy growing. The economy struggles and it can stall. Now, it's not just a problem here uh, in, in, in Italy. If I look at uh, other areas, France has got 96% debt to GDP. UK has 90%, Spain 99%, Greece 175 and Germany 70%. So what governments have to do when the debt becomes too high and what, the, what it's happened since the post-2008 uh, uh, general uh, financial crisis is that debt's gone up. And bailing the banks out, the debt's gone up. And it's the highest level of debt ever seen in peacetime. So governments pursue three routes to reduce the debt and get the economies moving again. They either grow their way out, they create inflation, ramp up prices of everything, values of everything, and more importantly, wages. Without the wage increase, if values go up everywhere, people simply get poorer and can't spend money. Or the third option is to simply default. Now, defaulting is a likely possibility in the future, but it causes big, big hardship because one person's debt is another person's asset. So think of all the insurance companies that are paying annuities that would suddenly see a debt write down um, in terms of the bonds, government bonds they hold, big problem. So monetary policy has been the key driver as to how they're going to sit, fix the problem. But what we've seen is increasing criticism of central banks. They're under fire for not delivering growth and for causing greater inequality. And whilst many of you won't have read about a lot of this, it's been very evident in the press over the past two weeks because we've seen Theresa May at the Conservative um, gathering criticising Mark Carney. 
and we've seen William Hague with a major piece in the Daily Telegraph criticising all central banks. And the central banks have basically blasted back. Carney has said, well if you don't like what we're doing, change the law, go to Parliament and give us a different mandate. And there's many economists, particularly in the FT, that are rushed, have rushed to the defence of the central bankers. And so what they're saying is, well, central banks have done enough. There's nothing more that they can do. Interest rates are next to nothing. We've had zero rate policy for six or seven years. They can't go any lower. Possibly they can with negative rates. And we've done QE. Now, QE is printing money. Make no mistake, it's debt monetization. They're effectively pumping all this money into the banks by buying up the existing debt that's been created by the government. So this is money printing in a clever guise. But the money's not been going through the economy. It's still stuck. Now whether this money goes through is the real key issue. But the baton is being passed from company, from the uh, government, sorry, the baton is being passed from central banks to the government. And it's coming up in fiscal policy fiscal stimulus. And nowhere can you see this expectation of fiscal stimulus more strongly than with the election of Donald Trump. The markets are currently on a high with the rhetoric and the promises of Trumponomics. It's expecting, Wall Street is expecting private and corporate tax cuts, easing of financial regulations and massive infrastructure spending. 